Hi everyone, it's Athena. Welcome back. It's Thursday, the 26th of September. Wow, it's almost October, you guys. Okay, so today's message is simple. Simple, but really profound. Um, when you observe yourself, um, if you do, right? For those of you who have heard me talking about the witness, the observer, if you can observe yourself instead of, you know, reacting to situations in your life, um, how do you show up? Do you show up observing yourself as really positive? And do you understand that? Do you, do you observe yourself ever during like, a situation where you're frustrated or angry, do you take a step back to observe the way that you're reacting? And if you don't, if you don't, so it's like, it's like, try to see how you react, number one. Try to take a step back and become the observer. And then at the same breath, in the same breath, being the observer that you are, that you have become, try it. It's very interesting to watch yourself in action. Um, it takes time, but it does happen. And then the second part, for those of you who already know how to witness yourself, you know, in action and just observe how you're reacting to certain circumstances, then take that, for those of you who, who know, and, and settle into, well, how do I react? Do I react primarily in a positive way or do I react like in a in a state of panic or let's say out of controlness? Right? And then the third stage of that process is trying to get a hold of oneself to not you know, to not um, react out of control, right? So it's a three-phase step. And how do you do that? That's what I'm hearing you're asking. Um, to take several deep breaths, walk yourself outside, of the situation means if you literally have to walk outside, go do it. If you need to just take a drive, go do it. But try not in that moment, in that moment where you're just going to flip out or freak out or say something crazy that you're going to regret, take a few breaths, okay? Breathe in like... I don't know, I'm gonna say at least five to 10 breaths, okay? Which will do what? It'll calm your body down so that you're not reacting and or overreacting. Breathing makes us calm. All right, let's see what's happening for the collective. Oh my God, thank God the devil's reversed. So what does that mean? Toxic behaviors, toxic Negative people have been extracted. Negative energies have been extracted from our life. It's amazing. Yes. And it's a strong message because remember I said, and I, I always say the first card's energy is really, really, um, really dictates the reading. So we're talking here really good vibes. We're talking that we have released people, places, and things that no longer serve us. This is like, you know, beautiful. It's like, get, you know, get the F out, right? Kind of. I love it. Excellent. All right. So that's really good. Getting out of what? Codependency, that's the toxicity here we're talking about. We're talking about someone who's codependent and someone, whoever this applies to, is figuring out 
how deluded and, you know, just your reality, how it shapes your reality, how it had, had, had become your reality using the word past tense because, of course, the toxic behavior is gone. But someone was in a situation where it was only for purposes of financial reasons, which, come on, you know, a lot of people do that. A lot of people stay in marriages because they don't want the divorce and they don't want to split up any of the, of the assets. Um, a lot of people go into relationships because they think that's their life, that's their saving grace, right? Oh my God, someone just saved me because, you know, and that's not how, that's not how God intends us to be. God intends us to be what? To show up and and not get in toxic relationships based upon that kind of stuff, right? So I'm sorry, but a lot of people are in that situation, right? In relationships based upon the money. And now whoever is in a relationship based upon the money is realizing that, oh my God, I got to get out. I don't want to be in this. I don't want to be in this relationship. I don't want to be in this marriage for the wrong reasons. Well, for some, it could be too late. What does that mean? Well, it depends on where your situation is. Everyone's situation is different. Yeah. Are you, how long have you been in a toxic situation using someone else for not love, but for the, you know, a relationship based out of, you know, based off of financial purposes. And then there's others where I'm hearing there's others who don't want to get married. They're not in love, right? Someone's offering, someone might be offering or in a relationship saying, I would love to get married, but they're offering. So the other side of the coin is someone's offering love, but for the, all the wrong reasons. Okay. So be mindful. This is like, be mindful. All right. So the truth is being hidden. The truth of this situation is being hidden. Whether you're in a relationship for money or not, you're, you're getting out of it, but you're not telling the truth about why you're getting out. You're getting out of it because you don't want to be, you don't want to be deceptive any longer, right? You're getting out of it because the money doesn't matter now. What does matter? It's the love, right? I I feel this is also a married couple who was married. The one final this the one partner said, "Okay, I've had enough. I'm really not in love with you," you know. I love someone else, but they're not telling that person that it was obviously that's the that's the situation, right? They're hiding that information. Let's take this one and see what's up. See, someone is going through a rebirth. Yes, someone is shedding. Someone is still shedding and coming out of that completion, right? The death also of toxicity beautiful, the death, the rebirth, no more toxic behaviors, the old ways are done, the old ways are over, whether or not you're going to communicate that to someone that you love, or you don't love, or you thought you loved, right? Many, many scenarios here. The good news, the really good news is that the end of toxic behaviors is over. Using people for money and not wanting to be with them. That, I just want you to know, when you go into a relationship based upon financial independence, wanting the money, right? And for however long you've been in a relationship, a love relationship, be it marriage or just whatever, um, I'm just going to tell you, it does have great penance. It comes with a great penance. That's all I'm going to say. Because it's karma. It's a karmic lesson. You are learning the lesson of you, 
you cannot be in a marriage or a, a relationship that a union that comes together must be based off of, you know, obviously not toxic. toxic. We have a Scorpio Cancer Pisces who um, could be, this could be you if you have the, if you are the Queen of Cups, but it also could be just intuitively knowing it was time and it is time to go. Okay. I feel this, I, I personally feel that this is a Cancer Pisces Scorpio Sun Moon Rising saying to the depths of my emotions have overridden my ability, my ability to, to actually use my, like, are you, you're using your heart and you're not telling the truth, but you're getting out. N nonetheless, you're getting out, right? You're just not telling people why you're leaving. You're just leaving and you're re it's a rebirth. It's a death of a relationship, a marriage. See, here's the home. So someone is shedding their internal home, meaning they're getting out of something that they knew wasn't right. When you get out of it, like I said, that is huge. It's great that you're getting out of something that you really weren't being truthful about. Why? Because your emotions overrid, are overriding, sorry, overriding, and your body is also, when this is reversed, that means you have aches, pains, back aches. It's your temple, it's your Kundalini. So you're also fatigued, exhausted, and you have depression. All of this happens when you are all about materialism. When you are all about knowing deep in your recesses of emotions that you went into something knowing that it wasn't the right thing for you. And we all have to make our own decisions. No one can tell us what to do. Your, your uh, what is it? Ulterior motives are now coming to the surface, right? From the depths of, right? It became too much to bear. It became too much. Your internal, your internal mind, uh, mindful thinking, obsessive thinking, over just over has overtaken you to a point of desperation and depression. I mean, come on. And it's sad because I'm I'm going to I'm going to say that a lot of people do get involved in relationships for you know, it's it's a motive, right? It's hidden motives, hidden agendas. And then, you know, it ends. And for those of you who it has not ended, it will. We want to get out of this because we want to start new. We want to start with a fresh, you know, you have to, oops, sorry. You have to understand that the choices that you make come with consequences, right? If you have sacrificed your soul. I mean, this upright is the sacrifice of the soul, right? Because you're bound. You're bound. You're really not. But when someone takes a hold of you, that's toxic energy that you allow, that you have ulterior motives with and for on any level, right? On any level, be it financial, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? That's what it is. Okay. So you have to come to terms because ultimately, oh my God, look. Oh yeah. Someone knows what they've done. And now it's time to move out of this situation that is going to, is going to come with a great penance of some sort, you know. It just, okay, let's see. Let's see what else. 
See? So the universe is trying to say, really observe your motives. Really choose wisely. Why do you choose people for what purposes? Do you choose people for sex, drugs, and rock and roll? You know what I'm saying. Do you use people for that? Do you go from one to another? Has a pattern formed? Wow. This is pretty this is pretty crazy. The universe wants you to balance your life out and take take the um what's what am I hearing? Balance love. Love doesn't come with um with motives or ties, right? Love doesn't, that's not what love's about. So make a very concerted effort to balance out why you do the things you do. Maybe you need to write these things down in order to see the light of your ways. There's no one else in this picture. This is you. And what's really the issue? It's codependency. It's not, it's being your heart. If your heart is blocked, you are not giving and receiving love from a place of real love, right? You end up isolating yourself. You end up with lack of emotional boundaries, see? And the universe is saying, love doesn't need to have boundaries, Love is just, definitely, love is about devotion, right? So love with devotion and choose wisely with hopes for the future that in the future, relationships that come to you are going, you're going to be tested. I'm hearing you're going to be tested because the universe wants to make sure that you're getting involved with relationships for the right reasons, not for reasons, selfish reasons. That's that. Remember, the energy that first came out is the reversal of the devil, which is codependency, um, alcoholism, gambling. Okay, all of those things come out. They come out to play, right? They come out to play. So take your life and take charge of your life. Start seeing why you do the things you do. What makes you tick? Do you even know? Maybe it's time for a huge inventory, self-inventory, self-awareness. Again, choosing wisely. Look, same card. Is what are you choosing for what are you, when you choose love, what do you choose for what purpose? And is, why does it need to be a purpose other than love when you choose to be in a relationship? Are you fearful of literally believing that someone could love you for any other reason but something, you know, toxic? Or is it you that cannot love because of the fear. The fear is too strong, right? Love is a sacrifice. So you are getting out of the depths of the emotional turbulence of your own, basically of your own self. And you're going to have to get out of fear and into a feeling of hopeful and a, and Choosing your partners wisely and not for selfish reasons. Okay, let's get um, Ascended Master Archangel card. And, you know, I'm going to say it and some may not appreciate it, but let's just put it, let's just get very real, which I'm all about real. If you've been watching me, a situation that comes with motives, you know who you are.
Katumi says, Cloak of Wisdom. You have the wisdom. You have the hope, wisdom, and self-awareness. Okay? You have the hope, same color scheme, card, and now the wisdom. See? Look at that. The awareness, the wisdom, and hope all melded together says making choices for yourself based upon the wisdom that you already know. You already know the answer you seek. Trust what you know. You can tell Katumi has the same band of awareness around, band of awareness. It's enlightenment. Someone's been enlightened to the fact that someone has been using them for reasons, selfish reasons. Okay? So now get out of it, which you are. Get out of it and see the ways that you can become now that you've seen it, now that you know it, if that's you, like I said, you know who you are, but now you have the wisdom. Have a great day.